today we're going to make our marinade and for our lesson one recipe. This recipe is a great fit because it will allow you to, one, practice uh, a fun cooking technique of marinating and adding flavor, and then you can set forth and choose your cooking technique, whether it be roasting, whether it be uh, fry, pan frying and searing in a saute pan, whether it be on your grill. So there's really, really a lot of options for you to explore and grow from. Our first step in this recipe would be to pull all of our ingredients and equipment together. So with the recipe in hand, I have secured my oil, I have secured my lemon juice, I have secured my mustard and garlic, I have secured my salt and pepper, uh, I have also gotten myself a bowl, a whisk, and a spatula to work with, as well as a chef knife in order for me to work with my garlic. So those, um, along with my liquid measuring cup, when I need to measure my oil and my um, lemon juice, that is also here and ready. Along with my Ziploc bag for placing my protein of choice, whether it be chicken or fish, into and allowing it to marinate, it will help. Um, it's just a holding vessel when you keep it in your fridge. All right, so we'll begin uh, by setting, getting the first ingredients ready. We're gonna start with um, our olive oil. And in this case today, I am actually gonna show you um, an acceptable substitution. You guys, if you don't um, have olive oil, you can certainly use a, a neutral vegetable or canola oil. Uh, you could even, if you have a really, an olive oil that you open up and it smells really strong, you could use half and half. So you could use some olive oil and some of a neutral vegetable oil. So here we have a vegetable oil. Our recipe calls for a half a cup. So I will use my liquid measuring cup and I will make sure I get down to uh, eye level with it. Measure all the way up to that half cup mark, four ounces. Put a lid right back on that so we don't spill. So our first ingredient is in hand. We have our olive oil in this case, vegetable oil. Our second ingredient calls for a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. So you can use a, um, a tool to press out fresh lemons. That is definitely an option. Or if you have uh, lemon juice in your refrigerator, that is even an option as well. So we'll go ahead and measure to the quarter cup mark, get down at eye level, make sure we can tell where it's at. Right up to that two ounce quarter cup mark. Pour that on in. Keep moving forward. Our next ingredient calls for one and a half tablespoons of Dijon mustard. So mustards come in different flavors and um, Dijon is definitely a substitute. You could do a substitute in this case if you have a spicy brown in the fridge. If you have a yellow mustard, go ahead and use that. If you have a mustard powder in the spice cabinet that you've never seen anybody use, use maybe a teaspoon of that. So you have your uh, Dijon mustard that we're going to use in our recipe. I've gotten out my tablespoon and in this situation I'm going to estimate that half. I'm not baking so it doesn't require as much of the science. Um, so I'm going to go and put my first tablespoon in, move to my half, estimate that, and tap it out in my bowl. Set that there. The next ingredient is a table and a half, a spoon and a half of minced garlic. Garlic is um, is the bulbs here that um, create nice, strong, pungent flavors. We may all be really familiar with, and um, you can mince this. That's like a cut, and it really, literally stands for very fine in French. So you're going to go ahead and take your several cloves of garlic, where you can estimate you'll get that tablespoon and a half of it, and um, break it apart into your several different cloves. Now on this is a tough skin, and this skin will never cook down soft, okay? So we have to remove it, and standing here at our cutting board and trying to just pick this off is really time consuming. 
So we'll, we'll show you a way to pop the hard shell off and get to that mincing step much quick, quicker. So the, what we'll do here is we'll just go to our cutting board and we'll place everything down. And I'm gonna take my knife, the side of the blade, and I'm just going to take my palm and I'm gonna press down, straight down, until you hear that pop sound. And once I do that, then this, it's that hard outer husk on there has ruptured open and it very easily just pops right off, right? So you'll just repeat that step over and over and get the outside off. Grabbing any of the little skin that hits your cutting board, getting that off because it will never cook down soft. We don't want that in our dish. All right, so we've gotten rid of those hard, tough skins. And now when we look at this, you can see how when it's a, got some fiber to it, where the fibers run this long way to it. So we're gonna go ahead and take all of these and we're gonna smash them again and try to break them out to like flatten those fibers out, okay? So smash it. All right, so we got those nice and smashed out. And then we're just gonna start passing along it this long way. And we're gonna take our knife in our hand. We're gonna take it by the pointer finger here and we're gonna place our pointer finger right at this bolster. And we're gonna wrap our fingers around and secure the knife with our thumb, all right? And then now we're gonna work in this kind of 45 degree angle here of the sides of the cutting board. So look at my elbow. My elbow just goes back and forth like this. It is no longer need to use our strength because we're gonna use our blade to do our work, okay? So our action looks like this. And we're just gonna use our guiding hand, our claw here, and we're gonna um, keep our fingers tucked back in and just use our guiding hand to, to guide the food in. So we'll get you up and over what I'm working on. Right, and I have my guiding hand. I'm looking straight down the spine of my blade as I work. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start making small little slices and using my guiding hand to just kind of stabilize the product, feed it in, keep it safe and just keep working real slow. You don't have to be fast at this right now. But that's not very fine yet, is it? We can do better than that. So we just kinda push it around, right? Toss it up a little bit and do it again. You can set your hand aside now and just keep traveling, right? And now that we've made these initial cuts and started breaking it up, we can transition to what's called the herb cut. And in the herb cut, we're gonna leave the tip of our blade anchored and we're just going to rotate our knife like um, in a radius across it and then push it together and rotate our knife in a radius across it and push it together until it is minced very fine all right I do keep my hand up here as a stabilizer at this time I do allow my hand to creep back I don't have to keep it all the way up on the bolster I could it's fine up there it's not doing anything wrong but if it's more comfortable I can actually at this time bring my hand back and I just go back and forth and bring it back together clear my knife bring it back together all right this is looking nice and fine right very fine so now we have successfully minced our garlic right and we'll use our tablespoon so I got my one tablespoon Take the rest, get that all gathered together, no waste. Get the rest off my knife. Gather that up. Why did I use the same measuring vessel? Because I wasn't scooping it and digging it into anything. So I just thought, heck, why not? So this looks just a little, just great. We got one and a half tablespoons. And then this is the part where I wanna give you full permission if you have, um, chopped minced garlic in the fridge already, go ahead and use that. That's gonna to be totally fine. That's acceptable for this project, okay? So um, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get the garlic off my fingers. 
clean up my cutting board, right? So I have my towel ready. And I'm going to take my chef knife, clean that off with my nice clean water. So we go ahead and we clean our chef knife by hand every time. Clean off our cutting board. Clear away all our garbage. And go to that next step. So after that, we um, measured that. We have our one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. So what I did is I actually um, looked ahead and I saw that I had a half teaspoon of black pepper. So to save utensils, I grabbed my half teaspoon and I'm just gonna grab three to equal one and a half of my kosher salt. Now this kosher salt, um, if you have just table salt at home, use less. Because if you, uh, kosher salt is less salty than table salt. If you look at this kosher salt under a microscope, it looks more like a snowflake with air pockets and your table salt looks more like a cube and dense, no air pockets. So your table salt is gonna be saltier salt and in your recipe then, just back it off a little bit um, so that it's not as salty. Sea salt would be an acceptable substitution here as well. And then um, as we work, when we put our oil in, its job in our recipe is to provide moisture. So things like fish and chicken can lose moisture depending on our cooking process that we choose. If we use a dry heat cooking method, so it helps provide moisture, that oil or fat. The lemon juice provides flavor. It also starts to break down the outer membrane of our protein. So it allows the flavors that we added to our dish and um, the fat, the oil, to penetrate into our protein just a little bit and provide even more flavor. So that's why when we marinade, marinade needs time in order to penetrate the skin and really impart some really good flavor. Um, but marinating longer and longer doesn't necessarily provide more flavor. Really after that four to six hour mark, um, it's done, it's what it's gonna do, and it's not gonna penetrate really any further. If anything, if you're working with a fish and a high amount of an acid like lemon juice or vinegar, um, you might begin to cook it with um, ceviche style with that acid. So you don't wanna have um, things over marinating either. That's not necessarily its point. So now we've mixed this together, we've combined it until it's a brand new product. It looks gorgeous. And then this is where we go ahead and um, get out our Ziploc bag, place our protein in it, use our rubber scraper spatula to get 100% of our product into our Ziploc bag so that our product can marinate nicely in it. So we always use our rubber scraper spatula the landfill and the water waste department, they don't need any of this. You do. All right, so now I can add my protein right into this and allow it to soak in the fridge, um, not out on the counter, in the fridge for four to six hours, okay? So for food safety and to reduce time and temperature abuse of your, of your protein, make sure you put this back in the fridge. So you can see here, um, a marinated product. Um, I put my marinade in the Ziploc. I put my chicken breasts in here and now they have soaked and they're ready for whatever preparation I plan. All right, have fun with this. <laughs>